Hey, it's Joseph here. As an architectural designer, it is quite often that I go out for a site survey. So I am always on the lookout for the better technology that can make the whole process faster and easier. You've seen me showcase several 360 cameras and survey tools that I typically carry around. Be sure to check out those videos as well as the product links in the description. A company called Cupix was always on my radar as they provide this simple 360 video site capturing tool. And it is quite mind boggling how simple the overall process is, yet the result is quite good. And for those of you who is not aware of the process, you basically capture a 360 video carrying these pocket cameras, simply walk around the space with it mounted on a selfie stick. Once the video is uploaded, they have a magical machine that can process and perform photogrammetry to turn that video into a 3D space. And mind you, this 3D space is point clouds. But how do they turn this video into point clouds? It's just way beyond me. So I can't really tell you how they exactly do it but it is quite clever. So you can visit their website to find more information on Cupix. I will link it in the description. However, one caveat that I have realized about Cupix was that they are focused heavily on large and complex projects. The price point and the complexity of my smaller projects didn't really seem to have a justification in using Cupix service. However, recently I've been approached by this Cupix Vista team and I was delighted to find out that Cupix has created a completely separate team to utilize their great technology towards smaller projects with smaller budgets. In addition, they wanted to sponsor this video for me to tell you all about it. Cupix Vista is still in beta service. They are ironing out some of the kinks, but the results are still very good. I was able to get these point clouds and 3D models by walking around the space for about five to 10 minutes, if not less. And there's a bit of an unloading and processing time that you have to factor in to get all of those things on their server. For those of you who are familiar with the point clouds, you will see that these valuable datas are often created with expensive equipments that take a very long time to capture. And don't even mention the hardships that you have to go through in order to haul them over to a job site and also the expensive machines and the time that it takes to process all of these data. But don't you worry, Cupix has got you covered. Anyways, let me start from the top showing you how I have scanned the space. As far as the scanning and capturing goes, you'll first need a 360 camera. You can check out Cupix Vista's webpage for the list of compatible cameras. As you can see in the image, Cupix Vista recommends using Insta360 ONE X2 for the best result possible. However, my choice is Insta360 ONE RS 1 inch as I carry this camera to sites for the best quality possible for the photos. But Insta360 ONE X2 and X3 might be a bit lighter and less cumbersome choices. But it's always great to have options, right? Before you start scanning, you've got to set your camera into a time-lapse mode. You can do this on your phone that's connected to the camera, but I usually do all of this on my iPad as I have it on a site all the time for the field notes and measurements anyways. Go to the time-lapse mode and make sure everything is set to auto in terms of the exposure and go to the interval duration, set it to 0.5 seconds and then you're all set. And let's take a moment to go over a couple of things that you should be aware whilst capturing the space. Number one, keep the camera above your head. Because I'm using this three meter selfie stick, it is quite easy to keep it above your head. I can hold it out like this or just have it on my shoulder and walk around. I usually try to have it in front of me as I wanna keep some distance from the camera and myself so that I'm not covering the view as much. And there's gonna be some spots that are gonna be challenging for you to scan because it is way beyond your height. I'm somewhat vertically challenged as well. So 
I definitely appreciate the extra reach that the selfie stick offers. So you can simply extend this rod to have extra reach and problem solved. Point number two is to walk. Don't rush, take your time in going around spaces. And the guide says to spend about three seconds in areas that requires extra accuracy. When I'm going through a door or threshold or perhaps a spot where a lot of walls are kind of merging together, I take extra time. It might be one, two, three seconds that I hold the camera for and then proceed for the rest of the scan. Do keep in mind that you have a time limit of 20 minutes for this scanning business. Otherwise, you can just part it out to say internal areas and outdoor areas as a separate scan. I can easily cover three to 4,000 square feet residential or commercial spaces within this time. I usually finish well within 10 minutes mark. So I tend to spend rest of my time in scanning the outside. So I have inside and outside all together. So it shouldn't be a big challenge to finish within 20 minute mark. If the space is an outdoor open space, you can cover a very large area as well. I've walked around a roof of a very large shopping mall as well as a tiny little landscape area that has a ton of slope and it scanned everything really well. Number three, ensure lighting. In essence, this technology is photogrammetry. This means that you've got to make sure all windows shades are opened and light switches are turned on so that you have the maximum amount of light into the room possible. Going around the space that you are about to capture to plan out the path and prepare the space would be a very good idea. Number four, end where you have started. This may not seem as obvious, I actually questioned this myself as well, but ending the scan in the same position that you have started can result a much better alignment and accuracy for the scan. I have ended scans without ending in the same exact spot and has worked fine in the past, but in general, I have experienced better alignment when I did. So Qpix recommends that for the best result possible, you need to go back to the spot that you have started. When you're going around the space and planning your route, it would be a good idea to figure out the starting point and the routes that you're gonna take and how you may come back to the same spot. Number five, avoid a flat, detailed, texture-less areas. Photogrammetry works best when it can actually reference points or reference things. If you're scanning a very long, wide hallway, your results might not be as accurate. I may throw my water bottle or a bag of some sort in the area that I may need some assistance in terms of the referencing. Similarly, you want to avoid holding the camera too close to a wall or another object like yourself. Qpix recommends to keep the camera at least two feet away from the surfaces. By the way, in terms of the scanning distance, Qpix technology processes objects that are up to 15 feet away. So just keep that in mind when scanning. Lastly, I think we're on number six. Measure your space. I use my trusty laser measure to get the base measurement of the space. This kind of looks like a tape measure, but it also doubles as a laser. So I can just measure the distance. And I'll explain the reasons for this in a later part of the video. With all of that in mind, just walk around the space. And yes, practice makes everything perfect. So doing a bit of a test runs a few times would be a good idea. Once the video is captured, just transfer all the file from the camera to your computer. I do this by just simply connecting a USB type C cable into my camera. And of course, gotta put the lens cap back on so that I don't damage the camera and then connect this USB onto my computer. Then I need to upload the INSV file that I downloaded from the camera onto Qpix Vista's webpage for processing. And soon after, you will receive an email letting you know that it has been processed and finished, ready for you to download. Quite simple, right? 
And once you download that, you can view the file using the link, share it on the email, and you have quite a few options and controls to view different things on this file. Zoom and spin around your scan. You can measure your scanned area and see the scan in elevation heat map. One feature that I really like is to play back your walk. I can look at this and determine whether I was going too fast or I was doing good in terms of the speed. So it just later informs me that I need to plan either to walk a little bit faster or slower, that sort of thing. And there you can set which file format you would like and then export the point cloud file. I can use PLY file format to be processed into SketchUp and I can use XYZ file format in order to convert it into recap so that I can bring that information into my Revit. And I can use this point clouds as a reference when I'm making this model. So as a conclusion, even though this is a sponsor video, I want to set a correct expectations for Qpix's result. Qpix Vista says the scanned results are 99% accurate. 99% sounds very accurate, right? However, this means that over 100 feet length, it can be one foot off. If I get one foot wrong over the span of 100, then I think I would get a bit more than just getting yelled at. Take a look at this example. The space on the right is quite rectangular. I would only need a few measurements via laser measure to determine the column locations and the wall length. But the space on the left has a lot of angles and I would be hopeless trying to document all of that with just laser. So in practice, I still measured everything by hand and then took lots of photos along with some 360 photos with the same camera that I've been using and use Qpix Vista's point cloud as a secondary reference or backup, if you will. For any of you who's done surveys yourselves in the past, you know, unfortunately, you are going to have some measurements wrong, either due to your equipment fail or user error by writing down wrong measurements or simply not being able to read back what you actually wrote on the paper. Or in my case, I guess it would be an iPad. You can spend more time double or triple checking your measurements on site, but then you haven't got all day. I gotta catch my flight back home. So I call this as a fail safe method or the sanity checks. I can easily refer to Qpix Vista's point clouds and confirm that my angled wall in the drawing isn't super far off. And this may be just limited to my specific use case scenario and the workflow. You might find the elevation heat map generated with the Qpix Vista is just so darn useful in figuring out the gentle slope that's on the roof or this small landscaping because this technology works not only indoors, but outdoors as well. Oh, and do keep in mind that Qpix's result may not be scaled correctly out of the box or out of the file that you download. You just need to scale that by using measurements that you took. And I generally found my scans to be spot on, but I do measure my space anyway. So it is not a bad practice to measure your spaces and I just thought to let you know just in case. As far as rescaling, I can go to the top view mode, use a measure tool to verify scale of the project is correct. Let's say the measurement of this is supposed to be 50 feet, not 42 feet. Then go to settings, click on rescale, then in 50 feet to the actual measurement. Once you apply this, your model would be all rescaled. So how much is it for all of these scanning services and processing? As long as you have the camera free, at least for now and for the people who's in the beta program. And you can sign up right now. And the cost of Qpix Vista service is not yet decided as it is not officially launched. However, I heard that the Qpix Vista is going to be quite more affordable compared to the original Qpix. And I do love affordable, cool technologies that makes my job easier. If you have any further questions or thoughts on Qpix Vista, then please leave comments down below. And I would love to have the further conversation with you. Here's my few questions. Do you think this technology works for you? Or do you have a specific 
or unique workflow that you can see a potential for this technology. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.